Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how you can set up complicated networks of queues and simulate them using a Python package called Queuing Tool that is written by D. Jordan. Before we get onto that, however, let's first look at how to simulate a simple MM1 queue using this package. Let's begin by recording the details of the MM1 queue. I have drawn a diagram on this slide to illustrate the MM1 queue that we have been simulating for the last few weeks. The leftmost arrow on this diagram illustrates the arrival times of agents from the outside world. As we are simulating an MM1 queue, the times agents arrived is determined by simulating a Poisson process. The circle indicates the area where the agents receive service from the single teller who is able to provide service to the customers. Each agent takes a random amount of time to be served. Furthermore, because we are simulating an MM1 queue, the service time is an exponential random variable. The final bit of this diagram between the inward arrow and the circle indicates the place where the queue forms. As you are no doubt aware, queues will form if agents arrive while other agents are being served by the teller. These agents will have to wait for those who are in front of them to in the queue to finish receiving service before they themselves get served. Here is the code that sets up this type of queue using queuing tool. As I discussed in my other video on this package, and as you have seen in the exercises, this final line is the first call to a method from the queuing tool package. Once we have called this constructor function for the queue network object, we can call the methods such as simulate that were discussed in that other video. We are not going to focus how to run on how to run these simulations here. We are going to instead focus on the various arguments that are passed to the constructor in this line. The second two arguments that are passed to the constructor are the variables Q classes and Q args that are defined here. These variables are dictionaries that contain the parameters for defining the various Q objects that are used in our network. In our simulation of the MM1 Q, we have only one type of Q server object. Furthermore, the most important things we need to tell queuing tool about this queuing object are how to generate the random variables that determine the times between the arrivals at the queue and the amount of time that it takes each customer to get served. You can see that we are telling queuing tool that the customer arrival times are generated by the RF function that is defined up here. Furthermore, this function just generates the Poisson process that is used to generate arrivals for our MM1 queue. You can also see that the service times are generated by this SIRF function that is defined up here. These service times are exponential random variables as we are simulating the MM1 queue. This part of the code perhaps looks a little complicated, but I hope you can see that it's actually rather straightforward to understand with this little bit of explanation. In this part, at least, we are just doing and using what you learned to do when you wrote your programs for simulating the MM1 queue. Now that we understand the Q classes and Q args variables that are passed to the constructor for the Q network object, the only question that remains is what this variable G is that we also pass to the constructor. This variable is created by the command here, which we can see is also part of queuing tool. We can see it's part of queuing tool as the command for creating this object G starts with QT dot. This command that is circled on the slide creates a graph object. This graph is created by passing two further variables, ajat list and edge list, which are also defined in the code. Furthermore, much like the graphs we learned about when we were studying Markov chains in discrete time, the graph consists of nodes that are connected by edges that have a direction. The agile list variable here 
tells us that the particular graph that we are creating here has two nodes, node 0 and node 1. Furthermore, this command also tells us that node 0 is connected to node 1 as shown here. The edge lid ascribes a label to each edge in our graph. In the code shown here, the single edge that is in the graph, the node connecting the one connecting node 0 to node 1, is given a label of 1. In the context of queuing tool, this label tells queuing tool that the graph has a queue of type 1 on the edge connecting node 0 and 1. In other words, our MM1 queue lies on the edge of the graph that connects node 0 to node 1. Hopefully, you can see why the way that queuing tool sets up a network of queues by providing a graph and instructions on what queues lie on each edge might be useful. Let's consider a second piece of code, however, to see the benefit of this approach. We will suppose that in this new code, the graph is created by these three lines. It is hopefully clear from this first line that there are three nodes in the graph that is created here, node 0, node 1, and node 2. Furthermore, you can see here that node 0 is connected to node 1, and that node 1 is then connected to node 2. Our graph thus appears as shown in the diagram here. Now notice that the labels for the two edges are different in the definition of the variable called edge list. The edge, the queue on the edge that connects node 0 and node 1 is therefore different to the queue on the edge that connects node 1 and node 2. A diagram that indicates the queue that we are simulating is shown here. In this queue, customers arrive in the first queue. They duly wait to be served and get served in this first queue before moving on to the second queue and waiting again for service. If you look at the rest of the code for setting up the queuing network, you see that we now have defined two queue server objects in the classes, in the queue classes and queue args variable. This part of the code provides the, the instructions on simulating the first queue, while this part of the code provides the instructions on simulating the second queue. You can tell that this first part of the code defines the first queue as the label 1 is used here. Similarly, you can tell that this second queue is defined here as the label 2 is used. Notice that agents do not arrive from the outside world for the second queue in our network. All the agents who arrive in the second queue arrive from the first queue. There is thus no service f function defined in the argument for the second type of queue server. On this same topic, we need to explicitly tell queuing tool which edges accept arrivals from the outside world. We do this using the QN initialize command as shown here. In other words, this QN initialize command tells queuing tool that agents are allowed to arrive from the outside world in the queues of type 1. They are not allowed to arrive from the outside world in queues of type 2. Let's consider one final example of how queuing tool can be used to simulate a network of queues. Let's consider how we can use this code to simulate the coffee shop that is described in this week's assignment and that is illustrated in this diagram. Remember that there are three queues in this coffee shop. Agents stand in the first of these queues and give their order for either coffee or tea to a teller. The agents who want tea then stand in a queue to get tea, while those agents who would like a coffee stand in the queue to get coffee.
The network that we are going to use to simulate the coffee shop will have four nodes. Node 0, node 1, node 2 and node 3 as shown here. The edge connecting nodes 1 and 2 will have the queue for giving the order for the teller on it. The edge connecting nodes 1 and 2 will then have the queue for coffees on it, while the edge connecting nodes 1 and 3 will have the queue for collecting teas on it. We can create the adjacency list for this graph as shown here. Notice that you provide a list of nodes that the node before the colon is connected to. We thus specify that node 1 is connected to nodes 2 and 3 by writing 1 colon and then 2 and 3 in square brackets as shown here. We then need to tell queuing tool that there is a different type of queue on each of these edges, so we specify our edge list as shown here. This command tells queuing tool that, is a, that there is a queue of type 1 on the edge connecting node 0 and node 1, a queue of type 2 on the edge connecting node 1 and node 2, and a queue of type 3 on the edge connecting node 1 and node 3. We can then use these variables to create the graph object that is passed to the queue network constructor in the usual way. Then, once the queue network is set up, we can initialize it, the edges of type 1 and thereby indicate that it is only, this is the only place where folks arrive in the queue network from the outside world. The only place where the folks arrive in the queue network from the outside world is when they join the queue to give their order to the teller. Once the queue is set up, we can then run simulations of our queue network in the usual way, as shown here. We can also get information on how each agent interacted with the queue network in the usual way, the way that involves using QN start collecting data and QN get agent data that I discussed in my other video on queuing tool. Furthermore, just as I discussed in that other video, we could print the information we have about each of the agents by using a loop, something like the one shown here. For the simulation of the coffee shop that is shown in the diagram, the information that we get on one agent when we use a print command might look something like this. Remember that the first three columns in this array all contain times. The first column contains the, the, the arrival time in the queue for the agent. The second column is the agent's enter service time. The third column is the agent's departure time. The next two queues contain numbers. The fourth column tells you the length of the queue when the agent arrived and the fifth column contains the total number of agents, including the one who just arrived, who are in the queue. The last column is particularly interesting now that we have a network of queues, as this column provides us with information about how the agent moved through the network. For this particular data set, the agent first joined the queue to give their order to the teller. The times in this row are thus the times that they arrived at the queue to give their order, the time at which they started to give their order, and the time that they were done ordering. You can see that this particular agent ordered a coffee from the teller and thus joined the queue with the edge index 1 after they'd done ordering. You can see that the time at which they joined the coffee queue is the same as the time that they finished ordering and that serve some further time elapsed between them joining that queue for the coffee and then receiving their drink. As discussed in my other video on queuing tools, agents appear to join a further queue once they are done being served. This queue simply represents them rejoining the rest of the world with their coffee in this particular case. It is important to remember that there are two ways that an agent can pass through the coffee shop. We can thus also see data arrays for agents that look like the one shown here. In this case, you can see that the agent joined the queue to give their order. They then ordered a tea rather than a coffee. 
however, and thus joined the queue for T before rejoining the real world. The edge indexes they visited were thus different from those visited by our first agent. As a final point, notice that you can calculate the total time the agent spends in the whole queuing network by taking the difference between the numbers in the first column and, and the first and last rows as indicated here. These numbers give the time that the agent entered the coffee shop and the time that they left the coffee shop with their drink. Hopefully that should be enough information to get you going with queuing tool. The code is more powerful than I have indicated in these two videos. I have hopefully given you enough information to get started though. If you need further information, you can get it by reading the manual for queuing tool. Good luck with your simulations and thanks for your attention.